I would like to welcome Mohsen al Awadi, who is the director of the Space Mission Department at the United Arab Emirates Space Agency. It is a pleasure to have you here today. And I'm really keen on speaking to you a lot <laughs> about the cadre behind um, the Space Agency. But um, when I was doing my research, I want to start by this. I, I read um, a very interesting uh, piece of information that you said that there were about 84 space companies based in the UAE that have registered their interest to help build um, the Belt um, spacecraft. And I wanted to know more about how did, how did the UAE manage to attract all these talents? I mean, it, it's quite impressive. Yes, so these 84 are, though, I mean, this was as of when when that was announced. Um, um, and today, I believe that number is because of, we will talk about it, the Space Means Business campaign and workshop. Um, to be honest, I think is not really challenging to attract different international entities or even internal entities here or individuals in the UAE to open up their businesses just because of the platform that the UAE is providing anyone who's interested in opening up their business um, from being tax-free from to giving you different ways that you can uh, proceed with opening up an office space uh, a specific business and um, from from a simple thing that we normally do for day-to-day -day need, needs needs and sorry and uh, to above and beyond the space um, so I think that's at least what the UAE as a whole has uh, when it comes to attracting, uh, you know, international individuals, company companies, and also to to support the individuals here in the UAE to help them boost the economy by giving them different opportunities and different mechanism to open um, such uh, such companies. I just wanted to go a little bit a uh, step back because you mentioned it, and I wanted to know. How did how did you prepare local talents to be interested in in such a very niche um, industry? So uh, this is my point of view. Um, the local talent, the starting point, the key catalyst mission was the Emirates Mars mission. That was one of the missions that we pushed beyond um, the limits that we had on going to a deep space mission. Um, and realizing the gap that we have. So Emirates Mars mission was not the first space mission that existed in the UAE. There was a series of different knowledge transfer missions that got us to the point um, of the Emirates Mars mission back in 2014. And it was a key understanding that the gap that exists and how can we achieve that gap by having an, inter an international strategic partner that is focusing on the knowledge transfer. It's not challenging to find an entity that can sell you and you can procure the system from, but it was really challenging to find an entity or a university in this case that is willing to teach you the basics and the details and the complexities that needs to go into such a mission. And that was at least, you know, that first interaction um, from the UAE talent with such a platform to provide such knowledge. And today, some of these individuals that are talented on the Emirates Mars mission are the same ones who open their business as a consultant services, as systems engineering, project management, program management. Um, so this was, you know, the way that was, or the road that was paved to them was throughout the mission that existed in the, in the UAE. And we're building on that. We understand we're still not there. We still need to build our capabilities. Um, and that is what we're doing exactly with this new mission, the Emirates mission to the asteroid both. How are you building these capabilities? So if we at the space agency, we uh, look at the strategic needs of the country. At the same time, we are looking at the need, talents that needs to exist for us to be able to, you know, be dependent um, on ourselves whenever we are working on a mission, knowing that this is a global interaction at all times. We're never needing and we're trying to move away from needing to be doing things 100% internally. No, we want to do it always globally, always international collaborations need to be in place. So we're actually building on the different uh, talent that exists internationally and not just limited to the UAE. Um, so 
from that point, we understand the needs and the focus areas that we have as a country for the next five years, for the next 10 years. And we start defining what these roles look like. It might be a propulsion subsystem. It might be a systems engineering, uh, AINT, assembly integration and testing uh, talents. And then from there, we create these roadmaps. We have two roadmaps. We have one we call the technology roadmap that you know we're focusing on for the next five to 10 years again. And then we have capability development roadmap. So we choose me, Mason. We want Mason to start from a first graduate in the next five years. We want him to be a, a senior systems engineer. What would it take for Mason to get what it what is needed to get to that point? And we're assessing uh, the individuals throughout these uh, programs. And again, this is one example of the Emerson mission to the asteroid belt. This is exactly what we were doing. In that case, are there certain incentives that individuals receive to be actually able to progress, aside from, of course, the grand picture? <laughs> yes, so two, two points of views to look at here. We have a program that is called the Knowledge Transfer Program, and that is meant uh, for entities that's wanting to be part of this mission. Um, uh, so I'll give an example. From the Space Agency, we selected five to six members that are now no longer part of the space agency, but they're actually working on this mission to be part of the knowledge transfer program. Um, so they don't have two hats, they have only one hat, they're part of what we're calling the national team. The national team consists of different individuals from the UAE um, that are coming from the different backgrounds, from the different sectors, the private sector, the government sector, and they're here for the next 10 years until the mission or 13 years total until the mission is achieving its goals and objectives at that point and then they will go back to their entities and that knowledge they gain from this program will be back to where they're coming from the other part that we are focusing on hugely on is the startup companies as well and the private sector that they're not big enough to be able to provide such a service but they're Talent-wise, skill-wise, passion-wise, they're there. They want to be part of this program. And this is where we put the different packages together to allow them to be part of this mission. So again, if it's an individual who only is passionate about a space and they have some talent, but that's all they know. They don't know how to run a business. They don't know what it takes to open up an office. They don't know what it's needed from the legal point of view. We, the space agency, through different programs, provide all of that to them. So we have the space economic zone program, for example, is where you go and register your interest and they will walk you through what it's needed for you to start from an idea um, to an actual physical office that you have in place. And it depends on the, the financial support that you need. If it's someone who's needing something closer to an incubator, that's what we do at the space agency as well. For a year or two, we provide you free office of space that you can come and uh, do your work from there. On top of that, if you need training, that you again, you have, you're only passionate, you don't have enough skill, but you want to build on your skill. We have the Space Academy, the National Space Academy, that's been led by the agency as well, that will provide you the, the skills, the, the, the lessons, let's say the, the curriculum that's needed to be taught for you to be able to then now work on the missions and. We provide an on-job training phase of the Space Academy on the actual missions um, that you get, that we get to test you and see how, how much you're learning actually. And once you prove yourself, then we actually will contract you. You will be providing a service to the mission um, throughout your startup company. Actually, it's interesting that you mentioned this right now because my next question was going to be, these missions are very challenging. How do you ensure that the right people are actually working on? So. That is really challenging, and that is, I uh, mean, it's one of the hardest challenges that we got. So the first challenge was you're doing a mission that is 10 times more complicated than the mission that you successfully done um, maybe only eight years ago at this point. Not only that is more challenging, you're also needing to have 50% of the contracts of the mission to be done here in the UAE and with the private sector and the startups. So this is how we learn in the UAE. This is how we push boundaries is by getting challenged every single time we work on 
any mission that we're working on, space, non-space, whatever that is, that is, it is there that we're working on. The question, how do we ensure? It's always the way we deal with missions and projects is risk assessment. We fully understand by adding an individual who's not fully capable, but we're trying to make them capable, there is a risk on the other side that we might fail from either preparing that individual and that startup company or have a negative impact on the mission. And we deal with it, to be honest. This is the risk management aspect of um, of all of our missions is one of the most dynamic ways that we run our missions. And it's uh, challenging, honestly. We understand the risk that might come with it, but the bigger goal and the main picture is always clear to us. We're not that we will not provide science data from this mission. That is the main objective. Another main objective is to provide uh, the mission with opportunities uh, to the talents here in the UAE. They have skills, easy job or easier job. They don't have the skills. Another objective is to teach those individuals who don't have enough skills and be, make them part of the mission. So these goals are always there on us. I mean, with us, and we are always moving towards that with an active risk management mechanism in place that every step we take, there is a risk um, that's waiting for us. We do our best to mitigate it. And if we ever come to it, I think we've been doing great so far and knock on wood. Um, so far, we've been able to deal with them. Um, but that's basically how we deal with it. Uh, I do want to conclude this uh, interview uh, and not take much of your time by asking this very important question from my perspective is that uh, the UAE Space um, Agency is a government uh, agency and yet, uh, of course, you're trying to push more and more private sector. Um, how are you ensuring that these private sectors, uh, companies are actually um, helping you to move towards your vision as an agency? Whenever we have again, any mission, um, even when we look at one of the, the recent opportunities that exists on this mission, um, the the Mission Operations Center, we have today entities here in the OE that is more than capable to deliver such service. But the mission is requesting us to find and create a new Mission Operations Center. So every mission, every new initiative that we have, we go through an RFP process for first pro proposal. And we always have to and need to ensure that the private sector in the UAE is getting part of that deal as well. Not just because we have to make it happen, or, you know, even if they're bad, they need to prove themselves. They need to make sure that they're able to uh, do the service for us, whatever that service is. But that's the way we've been doing every single uh, project that's been up, you know, been, been recently announced. Not recently, since 2021, I would say, from my time joining the space agency, is providing that opportunity to to everyone. And even if we know we have a specific entity that is more than capable of doing that, we know we are not able to just go ahead and single source it to them. We have to provide this opportunity um, to everyone. And then if someone comes close and Again, they're not fully capable. We have this program that I mentioned again, the Emirates Capability Development Program. That let's see, okay, you're fifty percent there. How can we make you one hundred percent there? What program do you need? What standards do you need support with, um, so you can enhance your process internally to be able to meet our requirements? Why do you do this program? Just to follow up, why don't you just find someone else or some other organization? Uh, that's the hope. One day that I can give it to someone else, but today. Because we are strategically looking at this and we, we we have the bigger picture with us and it's done for the first time on this scale. So definitely that first version has to be implemented and done the oversight part of it done by us at the agency until, you know, that's the end goal. I mean, I hope that there's a private company sometime soon or a startup company that can take over this from us. And they understand the vision, they understand the goal, and they can do it on their own. That's the same concept we have for the Space Academy. Space Academy today is a, a program that lives within the space agency. We want to get it to a place that we can say who's capable of doing this on their own. And you get the funding, you get the incentive that you need to be running that program and can be its own space, its own academy. So that that would be the end result and the end goal of um, of these initiatives.
Thank you very much, Watson, for your time. It was a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it.